Hi guys, welcome to the third video in chapter 11. This video is going to be all about the properties of liquids and how the intermolecular forces affect those properties. So the intermolecular forces and really the strength of the intermolecular forces can greatly affect the properties of a liquid. So the properties of liquids that we're going to look at are viscosity, surface tension, and capillary action. And then we're going to look at some other um, forces that are affected that kind of play into those physical properties. So the first being viscosity. So viscosity is just the resistance of a liquid to flow. So the harder it is for the liquid to flow, the higher the viscosity. And when you think about viscosity, think about the ease of the molecules sliding over one another. So the easier it is for the molecules to slide past one another, um, the easier it's going to flow and the lower the viscosity. The harder it is for those molecules to slide past one another, the harder it's going to be for it to flow and the higher the viscosity. So viscosity really depends on the strength of the intermolecular forces. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the viscosity. And that's because when the intermolecular forces are stronger, they're more attracted, and so it's not as easy for those molecules to slide past. They, would, they just want to be attracted to each other and not slide. That means that it's going to um, be harder to flow, and it's going to have a higher viscosity. So with viscosity, um, large molecules, so long branched molecules get tangled up. Um, so think about when you slide past one another, right? If they're very big, long molecules, they get all tangled up. So the intermolecular forces are stronger and the viscosity is greater. Remember when we talked about intermolecular forces, we talked about surface area. And the more surface area, the stronger the intermolecular forces. So the stronger the intermolecular forces, um, the harder it is for that substance to flow and the greater the viscosity. But if we increase the temperature, the viscosity will actually decrease. So think about maple syrup or honey. Um, if you heat that up, it actually flows much faster. And that's because when you increase the temperature, you're increasing the speed of those molecules, and that's overcoming some of the intermolecular forces. So when you increase the temperature, you decrease the velocity. It's easier to flow when you're at a higher temperature. Now, when comparing viscosity, this is really important. Um, you should look at similar types of molecules. So maybe you look at all nonpolar or all polar um, because you want to make sure that you're focusing on similar types of intermolecular forces. So look at all dispersion or all dipole-dipole um, because like hydrogen bonding, they all have very unique properties. So you want to actually look at all, all hydrogen bonds or dipole-dipole is going to have different properties. So just make sure that you look at the similar types of compounds when you're comparing viscosity. So um, when we look at viscosity, um, this is just a video that shows the um, viscosity in action. So it actually looks at different um, compounds, different molecules, and how well they flow portions of our ingredients into our little containers. In the first heat of our race, we have water, rubbing alcohol, and cream. Water finishes first with a time of 0.233 seconds, and rubbing alcohol finishes last with a time of 0.4 seconds. Okay, so with that, uh, with looking at the water, the rubbing alcohol, and the cream, okay, water flowed the fastest. This has the lowest viscosity. Um, and in the, the case of these three, rubbing alcohol finished last, so this actually has the highest viscosity out of these three. A time of 0.233 seconds, and rubbing alcohol finishes last with a time of 0.4 seconds. In the second heat of our race, we're going to be racing olive oil, lamp oil, and vegetable oil. Lamp oil finished first with a time of 0.467, and olive oil finished last with a time of 0.633 seconds. So think about what that means. In the final means. heat of our race, we're going to be racing honey, maple syrup, corn syrup, and dish soap. First to cross the finish line is maple syrup with a time of 1.33 seconds, followed by the blue dish soap with a time of 4.633 seconds. So and then what does this mean surely, about viscosity? The corn syrup crosses the line with a 19.5 seconds, and then finally honey with a 20.767 seconds. 
So what does that mean about viscosity, right? Honey has the highest viscosity. Um, it's hardest for the honey to flow. Now, if you want to have some fun and waste a little bit of time exploring the effects of temperature and viscosity, you can actually go to this website at the bottom, which is also hyperlinked on uh, the class website under um, the intermolecular forces section. Um, this actually lets you look at different substances and what happens when you change temperature. Um, and you actually measure the viscosity by looking at um, a metal ball falling through the liquids. So this is actually really cool if you just want to take a look at the different uh, viscosities of just different substances at different temperatures. So the next property that we're going to look at is surface tension. So when we look at surface tension, it's important to know that the bulk molecules in the liquid, so all of these molecules that are in the liquid are attracted to all of the molecules around it. Okay, so the one molecule is attracted outward uh, to all of the other molecules around it. Um, the surface molecules, though, are only attracted inward. So there's no upward force at all. They're all attracted inward. And when they're all attracted inward, this creates a skin on the top of the surface. Okay? Because, again, that surface molecule is attracted inward. Okay? So that just creates this, this surface, this skin on the top. Um, the stronger the intermolecular force is, the more these surface molecules are attracted inward. And the harder, the tighter um, they're held. Um, and the, the harder it is to break that skin. So with surface tension, the, the actual definition is it's the amount of energy that's required to increase the surface area by some amount. What we're going to think of it as is it's the amount of energy that's required to break the skin on the surface of the liquid. So the stronger intermolecular forces cause higher surface tension. So if you look at molecule A right here, Right, the stronger intermolecular forces means that it's attracted to all of these molecules around it much more, and it's going to take much more energy to break those attractions. But when you increase the temperature, right? when you increase the temperature, what are you doing to the particles? Well, you're speeding those up. When you speed up the particles, you're overcoming the attractions. Right? They're not as attracted to each other because they're spreading out. So at a higher temperature, you actually lower the surface tension of water. And uh, surface tension allows for a lot of unique properties of water, um, you know, such as different um, objects being able to float on water, um, not thinking of density, um, but just thinking about something um, floating on the water because it can't break the surface. Also water beating up, that's, that's special uh, just to water as well. So here is um, an interesting video um, that shows water's high surface tension. Some young Costa Rican basilisk lizards are looking for food. Basilisks have been nicknamed the Jesus Christ lizard. Why? This adult male, probably the father of the young lizards, can't tell us. Nor can this female, exclusive property of the territorial male. It has nothing to do with the feeding habits of the basilisk, which consists primarily of insects and berries. This predatory reptile will help reveal the secret as it stalks the young basilisk. Jesus Christ lizard because it can walk, well, really run on water. It bicycles its hind legs and the tail becomes a counterweight. We can't know what the snake is thinking. Did it really want to eat the lizard or did it just want to show? So because of water's high surface tension, this lizard did not have enough energy to break the surface of the water, um, and therefore it could run across the water. 
So there are two other types of forces that kind of tie into both surface tension and the next property that we're going to look at. And these are cohesive and adhesive forces or cohesion and adhesion. So cohesive forces are the intermolecular forces that bind molecules to one another. And instead of bind, let's think about the word attract. So cohesion is when molecules that are similar to one another attract. Um, so like water molecules, for example, they're attracted to each other, that's cohesion. Adhesion is the intermolecular force that attracts molecules to a surface. So think about um, like tape, right, like scotch tape. That's called adhesive tape because you are sticking something to a surface. So cohesion is when molecules are attracted to themselves. Adhesion is when molecules are attracted to a surface. Now this is really important when we look at a meniscus. And so in water and most other substances, the meniscus is curved inward. Right, so when we read the meniscus, we read from the bottom, right, from the bottom of the curve. And the reason that, that this meniscus curves inward is because we have adhesion on the sides of the glass. So glass is actually silicon dioxide, SiO2, um, and this is polar. And so water molecules are attracted to the side of the glass as it really goes down into the test tube. And so because of these adhesive forces on the side and the cohesive forces in the center, um, we actually get this curved meniscus. So in this example of water, the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces because of that curved meniscus. Now with mercury, notice that we don't have any mercury attracted to this glass. Okay, mercury is just Hg, this is nonpolar. So there is no adhesive forces, right? The nonpolar mercury is not attracted to the polar um, glass. And so these cohesive forces are actually greater and this causes the meniscus to curve upward. So if we were to read this meniscus for the mercury, we actually read it from the top of the curve. And so this is actually how a meniscus is formed based on adhesive and cohesive forces. So the last property that we're going to look at is capillary action. And capillary action is just the rise of liquids of very narrow tubes. So these thin glass tubes are called capillary tubes. Um, and what happens is the liquid climbs up this tube spontaneously until the adhesive and cohesive forces are balanced out by gravity. A capillary action is really important because this is a way that trees get water through their roots up through the tree. Um, it uses capillary action, it's the spontaneous rising of water through the root system. Now with cohesion and adhesion is a special property um, and it's called beading. So beading, think about if you take your car to the car wash and you get it waxed. Right, right after you get your car waxed, if it rains, you have water that beads up on the surface. And right? it doesn't spread out, it actually beads up. And this is because water is polar and wax is very, very nonpolar. It's all carbon and hydrogen, which is always very nonpolar. So if a polar substance is placed on a nonpolar surface, um, there are cohesive forces. So looking at this water molecule, these water molecules are attracted to each other but they are not attracted to the surface. So there are cohesive forces here, but there's no adhesion. And so this is what causes the water to bead. Um, when we look at beading, we can also think about hydrophobic versus hydrophilic. So hydrophobic means water fearing. So if you have a nonpolar substance, nonpolar substances are not attracted to water because water is polar. So this actually creates um, these beads, that's what helps create these beads, is that the wax is not attracted to the water, the water is not attracted to the wax. Now hydrophilic means water loving. So if instead of wax this were, you know, ethanol, ethanol is polar. This water would be attracted to the ethanol and then it would just spread out. It wouldn't bead up like that. So that is it for properties of liquids. 
Um, be sure if you have questions that um, you read the book, okay, skim through section 11.3 just to make sure if there's any questions that you have, you can get any more clarifying information um, and make sure that if you do have any final questions, um, just ask in class.